The best thing about solo camping, you don't have to share the s'mores. Erin's loading up the canoe here for her first solo trip. I have to go to work. It's not fair. Top, I know. I'm sorry. Betray you. No, you're not going anywhere. It's okay. She has the spider wings. Oh boy. Yo. I've arrived. There's a quick 150 meter portage in. So right now I've got the canoe in my barrel. I did my pack already and the lake looks beautiful. I'm really excited to get out there. Okay. Doing this filming thing on my own is gonna be the biggest learning curve. I'm used to having my producer Joan with me. He's an expert. Anyway, figuring it out. Just getting down to the lake now. Oh boy. Okay. I'll catch you guys when I'm on the lake. Should put the camera away so I don't crash the canoe before I get in the water. I'm on the lake now and I'm just paddling across this lake, which is Fenton. A quick 50 meter port, a little bit of paddling, 150 meter port, and then I get into Treby, which is my main lake, and I'll probably camp on there tonight. Feels great to be out here, and I'm excited to get this weekend going. Just finished the first port. Now I've got a little paddle in this channel, and then one more, and I'm into Treby Lake. These port entrances are quite muddy, so I'm gonna back myself in here so that I don't have to go knee deep in the mud. Let's see how it works. Ew. There we go, there's perfect rock to try and step off on. There we go. There. Just gotten into Treby Lake. It's a beautiful lake. And this is where I'm going to find myself a site for the night. Uh, it's a provincial park, so there are several sites marked on my map. I'm going to go check them out and pick a place to call home for the next two days. Just rolling up to a campsite here on a point, which I like. Um, it's got a nice fireplace and a little seat. Could be nice. I'm going to keep this one in mind. Give you guys a little look there. Could be a good place to spend the next couple days. Um, there's one more point campsite across the lake and because it's early and I can do whatever I want. I'm gonna go check the other one out as well. Make a decision. I like that one though. I'm tempted to take it. Nope, I'm gonna check all my options. All right. I changed my mind. I'm gonna take this one. I got two nights, both on this lake. There's a loop, but I go and I do part of the loop tomorrow and I end up back here on Treby. So I'm gonna take this one because I really like the looks of it. And if the other one's really nice, I'll sleep there tomorrow. So it's a win-win. Uh-oh, I gotta sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, sorry about that. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of camp. Nice tent pad here, and it's got some shelter, not above, but around from the wind. I will be sleeping in a tent this weekend. We got a new one from Wildlands that I'm excited to try out. So I'm foregoing the hammock and spending the next two nights in the tent. And through here, wonderful view of the lake. Beauty, beauty. And then, oop, over here. Got our fire pit with a little bench. This is home. Oh no. Okay. So, like I said, got a new tent to try this weekend. Wildlands outdoor gear. 
I'm pretty excited to try it out. And it's been quite a while since I've slept in a tent, actually. Might have been last May, so kind of excited to get back in the tent and uh, see how this one holds up. I'm all set up here. Um, I really like this tent. Full disclosure, I did something I probably shouldn't have, and that is I'd never set up this tent before coming out here. John had once in the backyard, so like we knew we had all the pieces and it worked, but I hadn't set it up. It's a bit of a different system. It actually only has one pole, um, but it wasn't an issue. Really easy to set up, really intuitive, and um, it's quite nice. It's Yeah, it's been so long that uh, Look how spacious tents are. This is lovely. It's got a nice gear loft here that comes with it. And one thing that I really like, I'll show you from the outside one of my favorite features, is there's a door on both sides, which is so nice in a two-person tent because when you have to get up in the night, you don't have to crawl over your partner. Um, yeah, I'm excited to spend the night in it, but so far, my first impression is quite good. Here's a quick look at the outside of the tent. So it's got one door here. Come around. And another door on the other side. And you can guide out if you want. I haven't. I still might. It's supposed to rain a bit, but I haven't bothered yet. I'm going to process some firewood and get some dinner on. Oh shoot. It's starting to rain. I have a question on this trip, a philosophical question. If Aaron cuts wood in the bush and John isn't there to film it, does it really happen? I was just getting ready to cook some dinner. I was processing firewood um, and getting ready to light the fire and then it started raining. It's not too bad, but this is a leisurely trip and if I don't have to get wet, then I'm not gonna bother. So. I'm gonna hang out in the tent for a little bit. I brought this book that I'm really excited about. It's about the siege on uh, Ruby Ridge. I watched the TV show Waco, and then I read the book Stalling for Time when we were out in Quetico. I loved it. It was about, uh, written by a lead hostage, a hostage negotiator from the FBI. And then one of his chapters is about Ruby Ridge, and um, I'm just super interested in that type of stuff. So I'm uh, excited to read this book, so the rain, although I was looking forward to dinner because I actually have steak and asparagus. Um, I don't mind hanging out for a bit and doing some reading. I'm just going to relax in my spacious tent and hope this rain passes a little bit. It's been about three hours. It's eight now. It's getting late and it's still raining, so it might be... Uh, off to bed without dinner for me. Um, steak should be good if froze it last night, but uh, we'll steak and asparagus for breakfast in the morning. Um, well, still just a consistent little rain. Nice and cozy in the tent. Still warm. Still dry. Uh, yeah, looks like this will just be my evening. So, fingers crossed for a little bit of uh, to dry up a bit tomorrow. Pretty wet, so I got to use a lot of birch bark today to get anything else going, but it's going. So, for breakfast, like I said, I have steak and asparagus. Like asparagus, probably a bit excessive, but it'll get the job done. Don't worry, I'll clean those up. Here we go, ready for the pan. All right, I've got it burnt down to some nice coals here. So, I'm gonna throw those on first. 
Let them cook up and then I'll do the steak. I'm losing a couple here. A couple casualties. They're getting slimy up at top. I don't know. I've never had that happen before. Steak still feels cool. Let's see. I'm going to cook it real well just to make sure because it hasn't been refrigerated in over 24 hours. But again, it was frozen, so it should be all right. Okay. I know it's morning and I know it's a little bit excessive, but I'm camping and there's no rules. I'm having steak, so I'm going to have a beer. It's got Bob Cajun. This is one of my favorites, actually. Common Loon. Heard a couple of those this morning. And enjoy a beer with my breakfast. That's good. I didn't get one last night either, so... I think it evens out. I like this solo thing. Why are they so slimy? Look at this show you guys. Okay, look at this. Does it just mean my asparagus was bad? It's all slimy. Look at blue. Burn that one. Yeah, I'm gonna make this steak really well done just uh, because of how long it was out of refrigeration. Hate to get food poisoning out here. Salmonella. I think it probably hit I'd probably get home before it hit, but still don't want it. Wake those up a little bit. This is good. Life's good. I do miss John, though. Oh, no. Classic. This is a strip loin steak. So I like strip loins because they have just the one strip of fat across the top. I'm not sophisticated enough to like the fat, so I just like that I can easily navigate around it there. And then it's just a nice cut of meat. I think they're relatively moderately priced as far as the meats go to. It's not a sunny day. What time is it? Quarter after nine. Or at least I've had a beer in a long time. So also, today is Saturday. And my birthday is on Thursday coming up. And I'm turning 30. So it's kind of fitting. I'm doing my first solo trip. Um, kind of a bucket list thing and something to do before I turn 30. Yeah, I can't think of a better way to end my 20s than being out here and doing a trip. Ooh. Open it up soon, see how it looks. Should we try some asparagus? It's a bit slimy. I don't know if it's going to be good, to be honest. The asparagus might be a write-off. It's a bummer. Ugh. Yeah, that wasn't great. Ooh. Some more beer. So I was just walking to try and find some more wood and I slipped pretty bad and I kind of came down hard on, I don't even know what, a rock or I grabbed a tree on the way down, but I got bloodied up. It's uh, bleeding pretty bad. It's okay though. You can see before it takes over, it's just a bit of a cut on my thumb. It's pretty clean. I'll find a first aid kit and clean it up, I guess type of thing you don't want to have happen in the backcountry, but it does. Yeah, it's not too bad. I just need uh, to find my first aid kit. It looks messy. You can get blood all over everything. That oh, shucks. Where did I put that? It's in the day bag. It is. It's my left hand, so that's okay. Um, it's more inconvenient if it's on my right. It's already coagulating a bit. You can see it. Um, got water here. I'm gonna clean it with. I filtered water last night before the rain started. Oh, here we go. This is probably really 
poor first aid, but I'm a bit negligent. Okay. Water. Is this filtered water? Come on. Clean it out. That oh, looks like a pretty clean cut. Shake it off. In the words of Taylor Swift. Gotta shake it off. Oh, shaking blood out. Okay. I'm just gonna get this band aid on there. It looks clean. I just would like to get a little pressure on it. There we go. There we go. And there. All good. That is what I get for being a clumsy ox and not having John to catch me. I guess I do need them. Okay, now that I'm patched up, I'm back out here. I wanna find and process a bunch of firewood because that's what I do best. Also because I've got Nan Calzones to eat. I also brought stuff for s'mores, which I'm pretty excited about. What else do I have? Chili and garlic bread. I've got some good stuff. But they all require good fires. And I figure I'm just hanging around camp today why not process all the firewood I need? So I'm out here looking. It's pretty difficult in a provincial park, well-traveled, um, well-used site. Lots of the deadfalls already taken. Obviously you don't take anything that's not dead. So um, it's a little bit more difficult, but not impossible. You just have to look a little bit harder. This tree snapped and fallen. So it's dead. So I'm actually gonna try and take a chunk out of it here. It's a good size, so you know, if I cut four or five feet off and then cut those up, I should have some, uh, some decent firewood. Let's see if it's not too hard to get through. I got a good chunk off over here, and actually I got the whole thing enough before it was hanging up. I think if I give it a good yank, I should be able to get it free of the tree that it was holding on to. Oh, well, maybe not. I thought I could bring it down. Probably can. There we go, come on. Nope, and it's pretty stuck, but that's okay. I'll show you the log I got, it's pretty good. Should fuel my fire for a couple, uh, couple s'mores, that's all I need. Got this fine log here. Ooh, that'll make some nice firewood. So I'm gonna process it up. Add to my pile. Fully honest, there's a good chance I'm going to process more firewood than I need this weekend, so whoever's in this site after me, you're welcome. I'll leave you my leftovers. There might be a little blood on it from when I cut my thumb. I apologize. Okay. Got these cut. Nice thick rounds. They don't burn that well. I don't have a hatchet. But I tried this with some of the smaller cuts and it actually worked pretty well. Or I just leave it here and I just use my machete to chop into it and then it takes a couple, but it actually splits pretty well. So I'm gonna try it with this. I get the log set up here so that, you know, I don't have to hold it here. That would be a good way to finish off my thumb. But these are nice, I just set it here. It's down on a rock. Just do that. And then it gets in enough that I can slam down on it. Use both hands. It's not as efficient as a hatchet, obviously, but it does the job. Look at that. Big unburnable rounds to nice small kindling. Same thing here, only if I can get it to sit, which I probably can't. Yeah, so I'm not gonna go any further there, but here. So I'm kind of trying to get it close to the edges, so I just take off small pieces and I don't go right through it. Oh, I missed. This is a cheap hatchet. I probably wouldn't do it with, I don't know, something I cared about too much, but I got this for like 20 bucks. I use it mostly for clearing. It's already in pretty rough shape. I call it a hatchet. It's not. It's a machete. So I just do that. And there we go. Ooh. 
and being careful. I'm not swinging too far. Again, it can't, the angle that I'm at, I can't swing around and cut myself. Like, worst that's gonna happen is it's gonna go into the rock, which it's already done once. It takes a little bit off the blade, but again, I have to sharpen it anyway, and it's nothing that I'm too worried about getting banged up. But yeah, I've got a nice easy angle where, again, get my hand out of the way before I swing. Just come straight down on it. There we go. Anyway, it's pretty handy. Just like that. Now look at this. Ta -da! Beautiful. I'm looking at those to cut still. Isn't that? I'm gonna have so much firewood. I'm gonna make the best s'mores. It's gonna be amazing. Now that I've processed a good amount of firewood, shed some, shed some blood, uh, it's time for a little snack. I've got myself a charcuterie board of uh, apple, some gouda cheese, smoked, flavored and salami. So I'm gonna enjoy this a little bit. I'm gonna hang out at, on my rock and read my book. It's turning out to actually be a nice day. I probably could have done my loop. I'll get out in a bit, explore the lake a bit, but I'm just really enjoying being around camp, to be honest. It's a beautiful day. I'll try and cut myself some apple without losing any more blood. I use my fingers. Not recommended. But yeah, there we go. Hmm. It's raining pretty heavily again. It's been off and on like this all day. So when the rain starts, I just retreat to the tent. And I've been getting some good reading done. When this round stops, I'm gonna head out and make myself some dinner. I'm going with Nan Calzones tonight. I'm looking forward to that. Got my fire going. I'm gonna cook up some Nan Calzones. And then I think I'm gonna head out for a paddle and explore the lake a little bit if the rain holds off. I'm not sure if that last one worked or not. The uh, battery died halfway through. Anyway. Just like that, go to super tasty calzone. Mm. Well, that's good. There's a couple of loons out there. And they were singing for me this morning. There's also a beaver splashing around. I tried to take a video of me eating my steak and I guess it didn't record. And then when I hit stop, I started recording, so all there is is a video of me cowering under the trees munching on the steak. The rain's finally cleared enough for me to get out here for a little paddle. I'm gonna go explore Treby Lake. I'm throwing a couple rocks in the bow to um, try and take John's place. It's not working. Nothing can take his place. But just to even out the weight so I don't spin in circles. Something just made a splash in the water to my right. Let's see, there's a beaver probably. Something was splashing last night. Well, something, I'm sure it was a beaver. But uh, woke me up a couple times. I was startled. And uh, fell back to sleep pretty easily. I don't usually have trouble sleeping, but uh, when you're out here by yourself, definitely a little bit hyper aware and. Uh, a loud noise like that can startle you out of a deep slumber, but it didn't take long to realize it was probably a beaver. This looks like maybe a little bit of a beaver lodge, but it's pretty small. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe it's just a cabin. Just a summer getaway for the beaver. 
have a nice tour of the lake. It's beautiful. I'm getting back to camp now. And I'm gonna start a fire and make some s'mores, which is what I've been excited for this whole trip. There's a quick view of camp from here. Looks nice from the lake. See my tent in there. Fireplace, food barrel, water hanging. Lovely. Beautiful home. All right, I used my machete to split up some nice fine stuff. I like the log cabin personally for making a fire. You've got nice kindling. If there's a lot of brush and small stuff, you don't really need to. I don't use it often, but there's not a lot of dead small stuff here. It's all been used. Scooped up by other campers, which is okay. There's probably mosquitoes coming out. Come on, there you are. There's quite a few dead birch around here, so finding bark wasn't difficult. The best thing about solo camping you don't have to share the s'mores. I'll give you guys a quick tour of my um, setup, just protection against bears or wild animals. Uh, we keep the bear spray. This, uh, you'll notice I have on my waist during the day. I wear it on a belt. Uh, always try and have it handy out here. And then, because in the tent, I don't know how much uh, good the bear spray would do if I'm in the tent and the bear's attacking me from outside, I also sleep with a machete. Um, I bring it out for trail clearing and things like that, but I figure I have it. I may as well sleep with it. I mean, hopefully I'd never need it, but I'd rather, uh, you know, have it beside me than have it in my bag somewhere and wish I did if I ever did get attacked, but... It's not the type of thing I lose a lot of sleep over, to be honest. I don't worry a lot about bears out here. Um, they're usually pretty... Um, they stick to themselves unless you get in their way or you have food that they want. But, um, yeah, it's not something that I worry about. But I do try and protect myself just in case I have what I need. Yeah, so that's what I sleep with. And it's just after 7, so I'm going to kind of just settle in and do some reading and enjoy the rest of my night in here. It's 20 after 8. I'm all packed up. So I'm going to take off just with the canoe in a day bag and go do the loop. And then uh, I'll end up back here. I'll pick up the rest of my gear and I'll uh, pack myself out of here. It's cool this morning overcast. I'm hoping that burns off a bit and it, maybe it'll warm up, but maybe it won't. Alrighty. I am here, heading up this way, doing this loop today. Excited for a bit of an adventure today. number one. I have eight today, but five of which I only have the small day bag and the paddles. I don't have the rest of my gear, so it's not too bad. Some steep spots. And everything's wet. You got it. I'm now into Junction Lake. Short paddle on here, over to Unnamed Lake. It's kind of, it's like a really narrow lake. It'll be a nice paddle. See some nice cliffs up ahead. It's beautiful. Some small cliffs to my right here. 
John loves cliffs, so I can get a good view of them for him. See those high? Beautiful. They're pretty small, but oh, there's more. Sweet. Beautiful. Six egg and all over the place here. That's some pretty cool little narrows. Hear that? Some unhappy loons and there's an eagle right above me. Maybe that's why the loons are unhappy. Family of loons flying past me. Five of them. Just looking for the port here. I think I can see it. Cool, cool. All right, port number two done. Grab our map and see where we're going. So I'm through there. Now I'm coming just across this. Oh, I thought it was unnamed, but I'm wrong. It's under. Underhill Lake. That makes more sense. Underhill Lake, right, hopping right across. A couple quick ports, and then I'm into Shakawa Lake, and then back to Treepy. This lake's got a beautiful color to it. It's turquoisey. Hasn't cleared up yet. It's still overcast. A little bit ominous feeling when there's no sun, but it feels like it's late in the day, even though I think it's 9.30 a.m. All right, here we are. Port number three. It's a nice short one. I can see the clearing already. This first section of this portage is really steep. Oh, and I was... Shoot, most of the way up it, and I lost my balance. So I toppled down with the canoe over my head, but no harm done, I think. My fingers got a little bit squished, but that's about it. Let's try that again. All right, finished that portage, got over my spill. That was number four on the day. into Shakwa Lake, which was my last before taking me back to Treby. All right, uh, port number five, which is taking me back into Treby Lake, where I'll pick up my gear, make a quick lunch, and then, whoops, carry on. It's quite a nice loop. I'm going to make a quick little fire here, nothing special, just enough to make some coals to make a couple more s'mores. I've got a nice little fire going while I'm waiting for it to burn down. Give me have my actual lunch. That's a lot of me wraps I made at home. They're pretty good, but they're just the appetizer for the main course. This is my favorite part. When I'm making s'mores, I like to get the fire right down just to some good hot coals. So I like a well roasted marshmallow, but not burnt. And I go two pieces. If you're gonna do it, may as well do it right. Piece of chocolate. I like to have my platter set up. Here we go. And then right on there. And then I actually often don't use the whole marshmallow. I'll use that on another one, but just getting the gooey stuff. Let's see. I'm ready to eat. Mm. Now 
Now that is a delicacy. I think we still have another. Golden brown. Look at that. Okay, last one. Then I gotta get on my way. There's an art to roasting marshmallows. Oh yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. All right, it's time for me to pack up and say goodbye to this campsite. It's been good to me. It's been a nice home for the last couple days. Got my fire good and out. Left a little bit of a cache of firewood for the next campers here. Uh, when John and I were in Quetico, we found often the sites would have just a little bit of wood and it was really nice actually to, if we were just stopping for lunch or even stopping at the end of the day, not to have to forge for it before we got started and then we'd kind of try and do the same, leave some behind too. Um, yeah, I feel like it's always appreciated, so we're doing that. I cut more than I needed yesterday, so whoever comes next gets a head to start. Yeah, head home. Back to the double carry. Oh, the ports on this loop are nice and short though. The longest is 150. I think this one's 100. Um, yeah, they're nice. It's not too bad. But I am beginning to despise the double carry. If I could do it in a single, it would be nice. Alrighty, I'm arriving back at my access point here on Fenton Lake. So I guess that's a wrap on my first ever solo canoe trip. It was a lovely weekend. Thanks for taking along. And I look forward to the next one. GoPro, turn off. It's not listening to me. Never listens. All right. GoPro, turn off. You never listen to me. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, stop recording. Why do you never listen to me, darn it? GoPro? GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, turn off. GoPro stop recording. 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 You never listen to me. GoPro stop recording. GoPro stop recording. more for you. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro. Stop recording. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, stop recording. <laughs>